Hello and welcome to Orin Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway. And today we're joined by a special guest. Her name is Brooke Muzzy and you are with Troop 185. Yep. Okay. And the best part about it is that you have just um, earned something monumental, right? Something that no other woman in your troop has ever had bestowed on them. So talk to us about that. Um, so I recently just earned my Eagle rank and I am the first female Eagle Scout in the Pond Man District. Now talk to us about that Eagle rank. What did it take to actually get that? Um, it? So it took me two years and seven months, um, about exactly, from the time I joined on February 1st, 2019, was the first day that girls could join Boy Scouts. And um, it took rank advancement, lots of campouts, um, hard work on a lot of merit badges, and um, a lot of like perseverance, especially throughout the pandemic, because it takes a minimum of two years to be able to earn your Eagle rank. And um, I, I made it happen in two years and seven months, which is a lot less time than most people have to do that. Now, how hard or how stressful was it to actually earn this during a pandemic? I mean, did you have support? Did you have people to help you along the way? Yeah, I had a lot of support from my friends and family. Um, both my parents are um, leaders in scouting. I have an older brother who is an Eagle Scout, and I have four younger brothers who are either in Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts and are also going to earn an Eagle rank ho someday, hopefully. Now, did you have a special project that you, that you thought of to get this done? Um, Originally, I wanted to do a project with a special needs school, but because I um, was having trouble, I was short on time towards the um, summer coming at me, I fell back on um, Camp Agawam, which I spend a lot of time there for scouting activities. Okay. And so talk to us about what that project entailed. Like, what, what did you do at Camp Agawam? Um, I first had to show up and select a location on where I wanted um, everything to be and discussed with Nick Carr, who um, works at Camp Agawam, about what he wanted there and um, what I could do to make it happen. So um, I planned to set up two rest benches and do some conservation work on um, the trail. So I selected the trail between the waterfront and the chapel at Camp Agawam, and we picked two nice spots that you could get a nice view of the lake. And um, I had to plan all the materials, how much that would cost. I had to fundraise for the project, and I made it all happen. And I had about a month to do it between the time I was able to get started okay and the time that I was going to be turning 18. So I was pretty tight on that, but I made it happen uh, about a week before I turned 18, wow. I held my project. Wow. I did have to push it back two weeks because my family got ill. Okay, and then talk to us about the financials. Like how did, I mean, this is quite an experience where you also had to put um, the project together get all of the money. How much did it cost to, to get all of this done? Um, so the project total in getting all the supplies and materials that we needed along with um, feeding my volunteers cost about $400. Okay. Um, I used spreadsheets galore to plan and um, research the costs of all of the materials that I needed, where I could buy them, and um, I picked all of those up. I fundraised with canned donations and I tracked all of that on spreadsheets, who I received it from, how much, and I followed all of that through. And I had about $20 left over of fundraising, which I used to purchase some tools to give back to Camp Bagawam. Now you mentioned the word perseverance, right? Yes. This took a lot. Yes. So if, that, if there were another word that you would use to describe just the feeling of actually getting, because you, you said they haven't given you the bling yet, they haven't given you the badge yes. yet, but just talk to us about what the, that feeling. How does it feel? Um, this is something that I had been looking forward to since I was six years old when my brother joined Cub Scouts. It was something I wanted to be part of. So it was something that I was dreaming of for a very long time, and when I was finally able to join Boy Scouts, this was my goal. And there were times where I wasn't sure if I could achieve it, and it was a lot of work. And to be honest, my parents had to put a lot of pressure to remind me that this was a goal of mine so that I could keep working on it. 
so from six to 15, what, I don't want to say what took so long, but what was the determining factor that allowed them to say, okay, you're in now? Um, I think there was like a lot of discussion and um, a lot of proof of interest by um, girls all across America, possibly around the world, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for myself, I was very loud that I wanted to be, I wanted to be there, I wanted to be part of it because I was always in as a sibling and did my best to participate, but I, I, wanted, I wanted it on the books. So when I was 14, I um, found out that you could um, join venturing, which was co-ed high adventure scouting, also mm -hmm. um, produced by the BSA. And so I actually founded Crew 2128 out of um, Lake Orion as um, my way to get in. So um, that is something I'm still part of. I am the president of that crew right now. Um, and how many, people, how many people are in that crew? Um, we're a little bit small right now, but we are always looking for more people to join. So if you are interested in joining, um, I would love to talk to you. You can always reach out. But I was doing that until February 1st of 2019. And so I was so excited. I went to the scout store. Okay. I, I bought my uniform. I bought my scout book, everything like that. In a matter of days or how long would you um, say? Or even that same day you were like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> Not quite so soon, but um, I heard through the grapevine um, with all the people I'm connected with in scouting mm -hmm that that was something that was starting to happen. And so once we got the official word and um, knew that that was happening, I started meeting with a couple local troops that were starting female troops, okay. selected the one that I liked the most, which was 185. And why did you select that one? Um, so a couple other troops nearby that I looked at, I. Um, I noticed that some of the girls were a lot younger. They were in like fifth or sixth grade. Okay. And I knew that I was going to be a freshman in high school. So I, um, I kind of made my selection based off of the other people and also just um, that troop and how they performed and everything. Because um, obviously it's more fun if you are surrounded by people closer to your age. And so you said, okay, I, this is something that I want to be a part of. You s set out for it, you've reached it. What's, what's next for you? Um, right now, I am a senior in high school. I just turned 18, so I spend a lot of time um, doing my schoolwork, kind of planning and looking forward into what I wanted to be when I grow up. Because, I mean, I'm 18, but there's still a long way for yes, me to go and that's right. figure all of that out. So. What would you tell some of the girls, some of the other um, girls? Because, of course, you know, you, you set out with this at six. Would you give them any particular advice? Would you tell them to go down the same path, or what would you, t what would you say? Um, you have to set your goals, and they can be big. They can be more than you can even imagine. But if you work hard and you break it down into, first I need to earn scout rank, then I have to earn my tenderfoot rank, and on through the ranks, and break it down into smaller goals like that. And don't make it all about the advancement. A lot of it is about the fun and the experience. And it's cool to have like the whole representation and to be able to say that I'm one of the first female Eagle Scouts in right. um, this area. But more importantly, you get, you make so many friends in scouting, you learn so many life skills and one thing that adults will always say to you is that it looks really good on resumes right. and college applications. So that is a nice perk as well. But um, just the amount of memories and friends that I've made is and, worth it for sure. And so you would say you also had fun. It was a lot of work, oh, yes. but you still had fun. Yes. Um, you have a lot of badges, a yes. lot of things on. So if you can just take us through a couple of them or even something that's really um, you know, monumental for you, something where maybe you persevered. Of course. Okay. Um, so first, this is where my rank patch will always go. And so there have been many patches um, replaced over time here, and that's where my eagle rank will go to stay. Okay. And on this side, I have my um, district patch kind of area. So this kind of represents like where 
um, you're from and what troop you're out of. And I have, I have an extra patch that's being a founder. This is where you would go um, with a patch that is your position in the troop. So when I was the senior patrol leader, I had a patch that represented that. Okay. I have a little patch down here that goes with these three acorns. And that represents um, NYLT, which is National Youth Leadership Training. Okay. Um, in 2019, I participated on that course and had so much fun that I wanted to come back and do it again. So over the summer, I was on staff for NYLT, and it's a really good experience for making friends, obviously, but also learning so many important life skills that um, you find out later you learn those in real life but it's really nice to have those and it helps you be a leader in um, other parts of your life as well um, another really important one is this is my film on arrowhead and i earned this this summer i went backpacking for 12 days at philmont scout ranch i was the crew leader for my crew of 13 people and I was the only youth female. My stepmom came along as the um, adult advisor for that trip. It was a lot of hard work there too. I was about to say, it sounds like as if you're pretty much in line with what you want to do, leadership and then also doing something with youth. So that kind of, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're on the right path. Yeah. Right, okay, and then you also have the a few more badges. I'm like, wow. Oh, yes. So I also brought my sash. So this shows all of my 21 merit badges mm -hmm. I earned. You have to have 21 merit badges, 13 of which are Eagle required in order to earn your Eagle rank. Okay. And um, I have 21 exactly because unfortunately I didn't have a whole lot of time to enjoy earning many others. What, and 21 in the two years? A, yeah. That's a lot. So <laughs> it, some of them are a lot of hard work. And then on the back, I have a lot of patches that kind of represent some activities that I've done, including earning my fireman chit and my totem chit. Mm -hmm. um, this is another council patch, um, my NYLT staff patch. Okay. This is a polar bear patch, which you earn when you um, I believe stay outdoors and for um, a certain amount of time when it's like 30 degree, 32 degrees or okay. below. Um, this is for Dragon Scout Roundup, which is held at Camp Agawam once a year by Tom Houlihan, and that we kind of just revamp the park, make it really nice. Um, this is for a lock-in. Um, this is our 2019 Hodag, which was also held at Camp Agawam, that is run by the Order of the Arrow and okay. Scouts. Hike in the Boonie, which is Hike in the Boonies, which is another Pond Man activity. Scout Sunday and the Haunted Forest, which is at Camp Debarre. Okay, so you tell me about this big hike that you had in New Mexico, was it? Yes. Okay. So um, I went to New Mexico in July and showed up to Philmont Scout Ranch with my crew of 13 people and it was five adults, eight youth and I was the only youth female and the the rest of the boys decided that they wanted me to be their crew leader for that trek which I was really honored to do and part of the reason they wanted me to do that was because I had my NYLT training um, which like I said earlier really helps with um, being a good leader. So it was my responsibility to make sure that we were um, making, uh, like showing up to things on time, checking in and out of camps, and it was probably one of the best experiences of my life. Wow. Um, there are views you could never see anywhere else. I, um, I met like a bunch of cool staff people. There were a lot of activities that you mm -hmm. could do depending on your trek. Um, obviously, there was a lot of hiking, we were scheduled to do, um, I believe it was 63 miles on our trek. And when we looked back on how many miles we did based off of like our smart watches and stuff, um, we did over 150 miles in wow. those 12 days. And on day eight, it was our big day. We summited Mountain, Mount Baldy. And so that is 12,440 feet altitude. Unbelievable. <laughs> Ask our um, pilots when they hit 10,000 feet, they put on oxygen. Okay. We just breathe the altitude. Oh my goodness. Yes. 
Um, so that was our big achievement. And I got to carry an American flag for the entire track. I carried it on my backpack. Mm -hmm. And so we did that day. It was so much work. I was so exhausted by the end. But it was all worth it. All worth it. Um, and you, you guys have yes. really good pictures, right, of all of that? Oh, yes. Okay. There are so many pictures. So at the end of it, what did the kids say or the, the, the um, people that you led? Were they like, wow, thank you for doing this? Yeah. What was their reaction? Um, after, like, we were probably partway through the trip, um, I had several boys in my group that, including myself, I was thinking about it as well, they wanted to come back as um, when they turned 18 and be staff at Philmont Scout Ranch. I know um, my one of my younger brothers who went on that trek with me, he wants to work with the conservation groups there that they do um, conservation work at um, Philmont Scout Ranch. And some of the others want to work at staff camps because it's really fun there, you can right. see. Um, all the activities they do, they have, they like play music, um, all kinds of stuff. But there are their reviews like no other, and the photos can't even say enough about it. Right, and just to be able to to go on that, like, did you guys have to raise money to be um, a part of this? Um, this trip? It is a bit pricey. Um, I we didn't do any like can drives or anything to raise money for it, though we could have. What's a bit um, pricey? My parents paid for it, okay. <laughs> and they went, um, but it's over $1,000, I know that much. Okay. Um, well, maybe, you know, people yes. can start saving up right now. Yeah, um, I would definitely recommend anybody who's been offered the opportunity to mm -hmm. go and start training um, to do it, because it's one of those things when you're handed this opportunity and you can afford to make it happen that it's one of those things you can tell stories about for the rest of your life. And, and, and I certainly would, yes. by the campfire, anything. I mean, the fact that you did, how many miles was it again? Um, it was over 150 miles. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Yes. Great exercise, you know, it's... It takes a lot of training, but it's doable for sure. So you mentioned the word perseverance. I'd say resilience. I mean, you're tough. Yes, that's resilience <laughs> was definitely a factor in that because waking up at like 5 a.m., every day and um, getting up, mm -hmm. having breakfast on the trail, sometimes sitting and watching the sunrise as you were eating, you know, your granola bars and right. whatnot. And um, we cooked our food. Um, we had like freeze dried meals for dinner. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like on a daily basis, we experienced some form of inclement weather, okay. which we had to plan and work around um, but it was all worth it anyways yeah. because sometimes there was a lot of beauty in that, um, that weather because I remember my first night on the trail, I was sitting with my tent door and the vestibule both open. I was writing in my journal and I was looking outside because far in the distance there was the thunderstorm that had hit us earlier and you could see all of the lightning striking in the dark mm -hmm. and above me were a million stars and but that's, that's in your journal you were able to yes, capture it that was that was like my first big memory wow. was seeing that so um, I always think about camping too were you guys you know able to to fish or to hunt a little bit or no we didn't do any fishing or hunting okay um, there are some treks where you have the opportunity to do fishing um, we did do shotgun shooting and cowboy action shooting okay. um, at two different staff camps, but we only shoot moving targets rather than um, live animals because right. we don't want to impact the environment too much, which is why we're also very careful about where we hike, um, how much we consume. We don't leave any trash behind, mm -hmm. everything like that just to preserve that environment for other scouts. You know, the main thing is that you had the support of your family. Oh, yes. Right? And then what was their expression when they knew that you were going to win this this particular badge or, or earn this rank? Um, they were with me when I had my Eagle Board of Review mm -hmm. and were there supporting me um, because it's like a really important moment in um, your scouting career when it's that moment. We got ice cream afterwards. Nice. But um, they had my back the whole time along mm -hmm. the way and I could not have done it without them. 
Wonderful. And then once again, the Board of Review. So do they look at pictures? Do they? Do you have a presentation? Like, talk to us about that. So um, the Eagle Board of Review is, there's a board of scouters in, um, from like around your area that have known you and your troop. And um, you have a meeting with them where they read some letters of recommendation. Um, you have your Eagle Project workbook that they read through and some other stuff like that. And they really, for the most part, just ask you questions. You um, repeat the scout oath and law, and um, they, they decide if, um, based on talking to you and what they have been presented with, if you should earn that rank. Okay, and so obviously you did that because yes. you have it now. So the next big thing for you would be maybe some speaking engagements or even talking to other um, other girls, other boys, mm -hmm. and letting them know, like, hey, you can you can do this too? Yeah. Um, recently, over the weekend, I went to my friend's Eagle Project and helped him out with his project. And I really enjoyed being there as his right-hand man and um, kind of guided him through the thinking process while I was there and asked questions in a way that was, like, to help him be the best leader he could be on that day as well. Great. So we just, you know, once again, I just want to say congratulations. Girl power. I mean, yes. you did it. This is something that is in the in the record books. You're the first, first ever, right? Yep. For, for um, Pontiac 185? Yeah, Pontiac Manitou is our Pontman district and Troop 185. All right. Well, congratulations again. We're so grateful that you came in to talk to us. Brooke Muzzy, I know that you have more big things to do. Yes. Lots <laughs> ahead of you. All right. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.